everybody, I'm Sarah. I'm Susanna. And we are Recorder Players. Today we have a very special guest here on Team Recorder. No one other than Dr. Susanna Frolich, one of the world's leading players of contemporary music on the recorder. She's based in Berlin and alongside an international performing career, she teaches at the UDK University. And last year she completed her PhD investigating the Helder tenor in contemporary music. What is the Helder tenor? I have not had Helder instruments on Team Recorder before, so today is an exclusive. I'm also doing my first socially distance interview, so I'm sitting here <laughs> and Susanna is actually over there. Hello. <laughs> on, the other side, woo, on the other side of the room. Great, okay, we can start. Can you first give an introduction? What is, what are the Helder Recorders? Can you also play like da 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 da? Thank you. The Helder tenor was developed by Martin Helder. He's mm -hmm. a Dutch recorder maker okay. and he was a recorder player himself right. at that time, and he wasn't so happy with the balance with um, the combi in the combination with other contemporary instruments. For example, when he was playing with piano or modern string instruments, um, the fascinating thing was that they were based on the principle of pure harmonics. Yeah? That means when I play the lowest note and I overblow these notes, mm -hmm. that they are pure. Oh, I just show it to you. Yeah. Can I compare that with, so this is my regular, regular tenor recorder. Let's hear how the harmonics sound. <laughs> That's very different. Yeah, totally different. Yeah. So here I can just overblow it with a certain playing technique, but because of the instrument, it's more balanced. And his goal was to set a new, um, standard in recorder making and to bring a new dimension into recorder playing to make this instrument more dynamic. So we also in included a piano key, for example. How does that work? So when I press this key, the key opens here, releases air, and then the pitch goes higher, which means when I drop my air pressure, it stays the same pitch. I just show you. So when I open it and don't drop my air pressure, I stay with the same air, air pressure. It sounds like this. Yeah, it's almost a quarter tone, let's say. Mm -hmm. And then if I drop my air pressure with it, So I can here play more dynamic, but if I use special fingerings um, to make the tones louder, I can have a wider spectrum. Wow. So it's a really big difference. Yeah, because <laughs> I have like... Wow. Yeah. wow, so you can really play dynamics. Mm. Well, you can see there are more keys. We added um, an F sharp key and also a G sharp key. Because you know, when you overblow or when you want to actually play a, a loud F sharp, this happens. And then with this F sharp key, you have a stable and a strong F sharp. Ah, okay. So if I play a chromatic scale upwards, it sounds pretty equal, yeah? pretty balanced. Wow, okay. So these developments, it's a little bit, could you compare it to, for example, the Baroque flute 
and then the bowen system flute like the more keys make it more uh uniform and balanced is yeah. it similar not really because um the bowen flute uh, really uses a complete key system mm -hmm. and you see we still have open holes and this was ah. one of the main questions actually at the beginning how far do we want to go yeah and of course our goal was that uh, recorder players with their own history can still perform on this instrument. You know, we didn't want to develop a new instrument like mm. like the boom flute because it was completely new and at, at first the people didn't know what to do with it and how to handle it and composers even said, oh my god, this loud flute, it's too loud, <laughs> where is my, my normal flute, you know? Um, so. It was also my goal to be able to perform on this instrument. I didn't want to start from, from scratch, you know. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to be able to do what I used to do, but more things. Uh -huh. So to add new playing techniques. Right, you know? and it's still a recorder. And it's still a recorder. But I guess there are things you have to get used to. Definitely. So mm -hmm. I show you the, um, a few notes from the third octave, um, and you will hear already the difference how soft these notes can be played mm -hmm. because I'm using the piano key to stabilize them but also I'm using um, different fingerings. Wow. And when I do shadow you see that I, I'm here already in this position. Yeah, it's very natural. Mm -hmm. If we compare that to, I mean, the C on my ancient Yamaha is awful anyway. you can actually shape the notes because mm -hmm. with this recorder when I go for those very high notes it's like will it work or not and that's mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. it Here, for example I can play really louder notes so this is now your C <laughs> yeah. but I can also play <laughs> wow that's the... cool. are you also doing something with your mouth yes and this is actually the biggest revolution that we have a flexible block system where you could put the block a little bit up and a little bit down which means that um, the wind wave gets more closed or more open to change the sound okay. but then also to vary the, um, the, the sound color you see if i turn it a little bit here this way so i open the wind wave it will sound more airy okay <laughs> Just to show you, this is the normal. Let's check. But then, when I put it more narrow, it gets this duduk kind of sound. Yeah. For those who don't know, the block is this piece of wood here that guides the air and produces the sound. Here it's fixed, but in the Helder instruments it can move. But there's more to it because now my lips come into, into um, work. Um, there's um, um, uh, soft rubber underneath the block. Now let's okay. say it's here. And through this rubber um, I can push the block and close the wind vane while I'm playing. That means that I can finally actually stop a note, not just by cutting it, what we are normally used to do as a recorder player, because we have a fixed wind wave, mm -hmm. now we can actually give it some, some juice or some spice or like a proper ending. Yeah? Wow. Wow. So you're squeezing it closed? Yeah. With the, lips. with the lips. What I also didn't mention yet is that we can actually experiment now with different platelets and blocks. So this means we can um, experiment with different voicings. Ah. The voicing of the recorder, really simply put, is the shape of the block on the inside because that's the way it directs the air. And if you change the shape, the sound will change. Um, and by having all these different voicings available to you, it's, it's literally different voices. The recorder developer I was working with, Eric Jan, he made for me 
three, four, five different blocks. Yeah. So I can adjust my voicing to the music I want to play, to the sound that I want to hear. That is amazing. It's completely a revolutionary instrument. Mm. Um, and the, the, the Helders, they come in tenor and alto sizes? Yes. And the tenor is now further de developed. Are there plans for a Helder bass or a Helder sopranino? No, not yet. <laughs> I would love to have a header bass. I think yeah. that, I mean, this would be quite similar to the Yamaha bass, I would say, uh, because the Yamaha bass anyway has also the pure uh, harmonics um, because of the bore and the keys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> um, so, a different question what repertoire do you play on this? Um, my research was really about the contemporary recorder repertoire performance practice, but also the combination with other contemporary instruments. So for me, it was really about the now. Yeah. yeah? And I really was, uh, my main goal was about questioning and shifting and dissolving technical limits and aesthetic borders of today's recorded performance practice. Nowadays, we mainly perform contemporary music on early music instruments. Of course, these are copies and they are still modified also, yeah? But, but of course, you can play anything. Um, so you could also play early music? You could also play early music. So I've already played medieval music because I like it so much with this sound, you know. Oh, can you please sure. play some for us? with this sound, yeah. yeah, with one instrument, yeah, or when you play something more fluty. be interesting to show you the differences in sound between the Helder and a Baroque recorder. Um, we're just going to play a little bit. Ah, but then I would do a, I would use a different voicing. <laughs>
beautiful piece. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn this. I'm gonna learn this piece. But yeah, the sound is different, and I notice the comparison, the less flexibility that I have with the Baroque instrument. So it's it's really interesting because I said in last week's video, one of the things I love about the recorder is it's kind of danger and it's beauty in that it's so fragile and things mm. can break and in one sense this recorder is really flexible in like like it can fall apart easily but this recorder is flexible in a completely different way mm, yeah i don't know where i'm going with this thought <laughs> <laughs> like as a last question how do you see the place of the helder in the recorder world, like will the two types of recorder coexist or eventually everything will become this new modern type? No, actually I'm I'm longing for diversity, you know, and this is also the great it what makes the recorder and recorder the big diversity, you know, and it makes it so special, mm -hmm. you know, that we have um, the range of medieval up to Renaissance, Baroque, so many different types of Baroque recorders, you know, and yeah. then even now the classical instruments like the charkan, you know, and romantic instruments and and now modern instruments like the Helder you know, but also the Petzold bass recorders, you know, the square recorders and mm -hmm. um, I think we need this diversity. Yeah. And my research was really about encouraging this diversity, mm -hmm. yeah, to really say we need everything, yeah, to really make this instrument survive and to yeah to show this beauty of, of all these different types and mm -hmm. kinds and sizes. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's lovely. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Yes. I brought my album with me. So this album I recorded for my PhD to really show the results, you know, the artistic results, what is possible on this instrument. I started with the header ten or eight years ago and then I did a whole research about it but I finally have the feeling that I'm I'm there but still of course there are further steps which have to be taken but mm. that's great also with our instrument. Yeah. In the description I'm gonna put all the links so you can find out everything about Susanna and her work but also about the Helder instruments. Thank you so much for coming in and showing us the, the instruments. As always you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. Over here is the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel and up here is my profiles interview with Michaela Petri. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!